In this video, I'm going to introduce you to some of the new features in Inspire Implicit Modeling's Point Cloud capability. We'll start by creating a simple model and we'll use a cuboid primitive for this. I'll now enter the Point Cloud context, which looks very similar to previous releases of Inspire, but we now have this new section here under the title Background Value which I'm now going to enable. And what this is doing is saying that everywhere in the space of this model, we will assume field values of a certain number. Now these can be a constant. For example, I have zero here, or we can use field driven design to select the field values from an existing object. In this case, I'm going to use the cuboid that I've just made. We have two settings, bump and set. And first I'm going to show you the behavior of bump. Bump is a sculptural tool where we can use point clouds to locally influence the geometry. So if I create a point by clicking anywhere on this model, you will see a pop-up associated with that point where we can directly edit the X, Y, and Z position of that point. We can also influence the radius that this point will have an effect over, making that larger or smaller. We can then specify a value that we're going to be adding or subtracting from the background field value, which are the field values of the cuboid. Now this has the effect of either offsetting inwards or outwards, depending on whether we use positive or negative numbers. You'll notice that the model has some slightly noisy or bumpy features, and this is because we have an infinitely abrupt change from what's going on inside this sphere of influence compared to what's going on outside. To soften that effect, we can change the fall off. Increasing the fall off makes it a smoother transition between what's going on inside and outside the sphere. Now let me show you some of what's possible using these three settings. So as I change the radius, I can get larger bumps or sculptural features added. If I change the value, I'm effectively offsetting by a smaller or larger amount. And if I take that to quite an extreme value, you can see I get a spherical addition. If I want to soften the transition between that new sculptural feature, I can change the fall off like this. And you can see that for both adding material or subtracting material traveling in the other direction like that. If I click on this movement handle here in the small pop-up, I can directly move this point using the controls x, y, and z, or I can actually drag this point around in a free movement like this, moving it in and out of the model, like so. So I'll just change this back to being a positive bump and I'll flatten the top off a little bit as well. The other way of working is to create a point cloud, which we can either do now or from within some of the other tools like Surface Lattice. And I'll just create an empty one for now, just so it appears in the right place in the construction history, ready for use on my next operation. What I'll do now is convert this model into a lattice and I'll change some of the parameters. Once again, using the field driven design capability in Inspire Implicit Modeling, I can use a point cloud to locally influence the density of this lattice. I'll use point cloud 2, which is the one that I just created, and I'll edit that from within this context. I've already created a point here, but the steps are as follows. 
Firstly, enable the background value and specify what you'd like the density to be everywhere in space, irrespective of what the point cloud is doing. So I'm going to say 0.5, which is 50% density everywhere on the model. I'm now going to use the set feature. And what that will do is take this point, which has a radius of influence, and it will say everywhere inside this radius of influence, we will take a different value for the density. And I've used 0.1 or 10% density here. And once again, I can change the radius over which this is acting. I can smooth the transition between what's going on inside the sphere of influence and outside the sphere of influence by increasing the fall off. And I can also dynamically edit this value to be anything that I would like, 20%, 75%, etc. As before, I can carefully position this by moving the handles or I can directly input coordinates for X, Y, and Z here. It's also possible, as before, to edit the data in the table, which has a list of all of our points. So if I want 75% density inside this sphere of influence, and I would like something quite different over here, I can create a second point. Once again, give that a radius of influence. specify a different density, let's say 20% this time, and soften the transition. I'll now increase that so you can clearly see the effect. And that is the difference between using the bump functionality, which is like adding values to the background field, and using the set functionality which is specifying specific values that the field should have inside the sphere of influence of each point.